Hi there guys, uh, going to do another video about the Mandela effects, this time in New York City. Um, I just, just listening to this guy and uh, what he's saying is like uh, everyone around the world are affecting very very sim similar things, they're experiencing very very similar effects, sorry. And uh, he does, he's obviously a native New Yorker and he knows what he's talking about so I'll just let this run a little bit. Tear. When I was um, a kid, it was a brand new bridge. So if this bridge is not in your memory, then you're from a different reality than, than I, okay? No, I've categorized three different kinds of people, possibly four that I've noticed since the change, but I'll get into that later. Let's just look at some of the changes that I've noticed, some of the bigger ones. And I have to mention the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island were never right here a stone throws distance away from the New Jersey shore. Well, maybe that's not a stone throw, but it's very close. Here we got New Jersey. Here we got New York. Now, in my memory, this was always a attraction, a tourist attraction for New York City. And I guess now it's New Jersey. I, I don't know what the heck's going on. Okay, so that's major. And I'd like to point this bridge out. I don't remember a bridge. I don't even uh, remember it being this close to where it would even be possible to make a bridge to such a small island I mean I'm sure yeah it's possible but it's like why okay be, you know that would have just had to have been way too long so that's changed um, let's head up the river N another change I've noticed here let's go all right there it is is Roosevelt Island okay Roosevelt Island has changed it it's now shaped like a boat okay, that looks like a boat going through the water all right, that's different all right I, I noticed these differences because this is the area I used to live in you know I came from this area all right this has changed and this brings me to the to the place where um, I want to talk about the three different people now one are people like me which are the most rare because I have not talked to anyone in my walk of life that is like me that are seeing these changes okay but I know this video you can see the date on it so it was like over a year ago so this is one of the first guys um, that was noticing the Mandela effects I really started to notice them about uh, April time or it was really the Holy Spirit that was impressing things on me for a while and uh, yeah um, this is one of the the guys that local people from New York City I have seen people watching YouTube videos that are aware of it so I know they exist but people I talk to are usually the variety where I'm not going to say their memories were altered I'm just going to say their memories have been fogged okay so that's okay basically that term I've heard that term like so many times this year so many times this year um, you know, my old friend Lloyd said that, or to told someone that his mind was getting foggy or something. Uh, uh, another girl that I was friendly with this year said her, her mind was foggy, you know, and then, so they come out through this fog, and then they they can't perceive um, the the things that are actually taking place, you know and they get an altered perception of things. Well this is obviously, um, I don't like to call people like affected by demons and all that, but I think that, you know, if people are calling me 
um, being affected by demons, is it possible that they are being affected also? I mean, we know that the type of wisdom that Jesus speaks of, and he says that those who accuse you, they're usually um, guilty of the same accusation themselves. I and mean, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Now, I remember um, New York City being different. I haven't even been to New York City, but I know that uh, the the landmarks which he was talking about was always in New York. Um, basically, I, I can just remember that. Other than me, that's the second category of people. Their memories have been fogged. Two people I, I can bring up in particular. My wife and a friend of mine that I work with sometimes. Both my wife and this person are the kind of people that you would consider as trivia buffs. I would always ask them questions about this if I didn't know a, a certain thing. But when I ask them all the trivial things that most is that mostly is buzzing around on this internet about the Mandela effect like the um, the Disney stuff and the movie changes they don't seem to remember it their memory has been fogged somehow which I, I find extremely strange when, when I lived here uh, me and a friend of mine used to bring our remote control cars that we built to this park and race them around because they had all these paved pathways. Okay, now the park is very much different now. It used to be you could walk to the edge of the water and there was actually a rail and you could bend over the railing and actually spit right into the water without crossing any highways or anything, which you clearly can't do now unless you just walked under a tunnel or something. Clearly, this is not part of the park anymore. So, that's changed. That's changed. Let me back up a little bit. Look how far I have to go back just to get a view of the Statue of Liberty. So, I used to go to the water's edge and plainly see, quite clearly, the Statue of Liberty, which now... If you were to do that, it would be difficult to see. It'd be a very tiny thing. You can see this is very far away. I mean, that was one of the things people used to go to this park so they could see the statue. Okay, you, I don't think that would be a major attraction of this park anymore. Do you remember? This, my friends, is the Milky Way galaxy. These are the spiral arms, and here is the center. Do you remember where our solar system is? Well, I don't know how this happened, but the way I remember our solar system this is a 1997 by Jerry Logrigus. It says that you are here. This is exactly where I remember us being, on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. Here's the Large Magellan Cloud and the Sigdeg and other galaxies. I remember us being way out here. I don't know how this picture survived. How did this, how did this come here from the old Earth? Because according to NASA and all the astronomers and everybody today, this picture is completely wrong. However, this is deadly accurate. This is exactly the way I remember it. So let me show you where they say we are today. Uh, lo and behold, um, here is the sun, and it is on the Orion arm. And, you know, you can see the outskirts of our galaxy, and here's the center. So, from the sun to the center is now 25,000 light years. From the sun to the outer skirts is 25,000 light years. In other words, this solar system is right smack 
dab in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. Anybody remember that way? I don't. I remember us being on the Sagittarius arm, and we are way on the outskirts of the Milky Way galaxy. Which, in other words, this is where our present location is. I remember us being exactly on the opposite side of the Milky Way galaxy. What's interesting is that, if you remember, we can't see through the galactic center. Radio telescopes try, but we can't. That's why um, I'm going to show you this picture. This is straight. Can you see this? Yeah. This is straight out of NASA.gov. Um, they're showing our, the sun in the center. Um, and then here's the galactic uh, center. And here they are showing us on the Orion arm. But I remember us being on the Sagittarius arm completely over here on the outskirts. Of. At all. Okay. I don't remember. South America way to the right hand side. I don't remember that. It was way to the left, more to the left, way at the bottom. I remember very well. I've been studying the South America, especially because that's where I want to go travel. You know, I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. I don't ever remember it being way to the right. No. You know, it could be a possibility. Yeah, they're jacking up the friggin' maps. They're, they're, they're changing the map. They're doing all these things to it. I don't remember Cuba being right there near Cancun, that close. I mean, the way in closing off the Gulf of Mexico, like something just doesn't look right to us. Okay. Back to the future writer Bob Gale has revealed that the big bad guy Biff was actually based on everyone's favorite buffoon, Donald Trump. Now, apparently there has been fan rumors of this floating around for a while, but it seems that Bob Gale waited until Donald Trump actually ran for president to embarrass him as much as he possibly could. My name's Danny Burke. We've got the full story on this and others right here for you on IO Trends. Tesla and John Trump. The legend tellers suggest that Donald's uncle, John George Trump, who was very well known as a scientist and inventor, oversaw the examination of famous engineer Nikola Tesla's notes after his death. Serbian-born Tesla moved to U.S. in 19 or 1891 and was famed for his reputation as a mad scientist. Tesla was also well known in his later years for exploring theoretical subjects and even made er, uh, very early pronouncements into the possibility of wireless connectivity. He apparently looked into fantastic theories such as free energy, anti-gravity, invisibility, and most importantly, time travel. And uh, that is uh, John George Trump pictured here. All right. After Tesla died in 1943, the National Defense Research Committee called on MIT Professor John Trump to look into his work in case there was any military application. Trump spent three days by himself looking into the notes before concluding there was nothing of any significance. His report read Tesla's thoughts and efforts during the last, uh, at least the past 15 years, were primarily of speculative, philosophical, and somewhat promotional character. Conspiracy theorists claim Trump found theoretical designs for time traveling of a time uh, time traveling machine. White House. Why not? 
share in the stupidity of the average American as they made him the 45th President of the United States. That will easily go down as the greatest president in the history of the United States. Me, Donald John Trump. On the ground, in this reality, you go through moment by moment by moment, you don't know what's up ahead. But in the higher dimensions, in the higher realms, you're on an airplane and you can see everything all at once. And so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Let's give another example. <clears throat> Time. Our reality is on this plane of existence. And this is all you know. But when you're in the higher dimensions, the higher realities, you have the ability to lift up off of this plane of existence that is bound by space, time, with high width, death, and time. And you can go up. Oh, wait. Um, I missed something. So, time for human beings is like a movie reel. The, the film is a bunch of picture after picture after picture after picture after picture, but in reality, it, it's all done. It's all here, all at once. And this is how the higher dimensions see it. They see it, the time, like, and the events, like a movie reel, and it's all there all at once. But human beings, they have to take the reel, they have to put it on a projector, and they run it through the projector, and they see it as a sequence of events, one clip after another after another. And they see the film as a sequence of events. They think one event is happening after the other, after the other, after the other. But in the higher dimensions, in reality, time is like a movie reel, and you see everything at once. And if you can see everything at once, then time is like this movie reel. Okay, I think that's a very good way of describing time. Uh, I don't agree with everything this guy says, but he makes some good videos. Um, God obviously created time. We, we're in dimension of time and space, so... Um, but when we are born again, we receive a spirit from, from heaven, which is eternal, which is uh, timeless, really. And, um, you know, there's uh, been Christians who have seen the resurrection that people who are resurrected into their new bodies are basically just about 30 years old and, and uh, whether they've died, whatever age they've died at, maybe like 80s or 90s, they just get this uh, timeless eternal uh, body, you know, so um, that's just a good explanation um, wh how the prophets, you know, taken to heaven and when you're in heaven you can see basically not everything God sees, but you can see things from, you know, um, a different perspective um, where you can pretty much see um, the beginning, middle and the end of, of humanity and the fact that God is in control of it all. Um, and what we have in between that is like prophecy from Daniel, which, uh, you know, speaks about the beast empire, speaks about Babylon, speaks about all these events uh, which tell the people during this period that Okay, this is this is near the time when 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 Yeshua is going to return into this time and space dimension type of thing. So, I man, I like the way that he's he's uh, explained all this, and I think that you know we've we've looked at quite a few things in this video. Um, very very pleased that there's not just Christians. I think I'm not sure if this guy's a Christian. I think he is because he speaks about the uh, other fact that um, in the old reality as it were or the old earth as he describes it um, that men used to have one fewer rib than a woman I can remember being taught that at school um, I can remember that but now in this reality it's uh, it's no longer um, true it's just it's just it's just, uh, it's just not there so uh, I wonder how many professionals as well um, and each of these are actually noticing changes and, and just keeping quiet and scratching their heads and thinking uh, I remember this differently but if I say anything um, you know I'll look crazy so 
I'm really thankful for the people that do speak up, even though sometimes that might not be quite right. Um, but I think um, I really get a lot from quite quite a lot of these videos, and I hope you do too, guys. So, again, um, look up for your redemption draweth near if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, um, please repent and turn to the Lord Jesus, and uh, He shall forgive you, and uh, He shall inherit eternal life with Him. That's His promise. All right, guys. Shalom.